All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and we are in the preseason of 2018 following my Season 1 MLS Cup Championship. We did the uh, MLS draft already, and we'll kind of look at uh, all the players that I, I brought in. But um, thought first what we do is we would go, we would look at kind of the MLS um, preseason outlook. Now, as you can tell, they've made me the favorites. Um, but that, I really think that's kind of based on what I did last season. When you look at my squad, it's really hard to imagine my squad being the best squad in the league. And we'll, we'll look at it and show you why. It's, um, I, I just about, I, hate, I don't want to use the phrase blew up, but I, I just about blew up my team uh, because, well, we, <laughs> we needed to rebuild. We were getting old in places, and there were some places where we just weren't good enough. And we were the the guys that were there were not going to get good enough, and so when that happens, um, I kind of blow up my squad. But the reality is, is that a lot of the guys that won me that championship are still here, and we'll um, we'll we'll look at that in a second. So yeah, I'm I'm the favorite. Um, Atlanta is second, um, which you know they were the runners up, <clears throat> and then NYCFC and the Galaxy are third and fourth. Now, they didn't have great seasons last year, but they do have very, very good squads. Um, and they're also backed by a lot of money. Um, and then you get the Red Bulls and Toronto FC. Um, Toronto FC has a very good team, so they will be a challenge. Um, but then, you know, you kind of kind of got the rest after that. They all, you know, a lot of... That, there's a big drop-off. Um, really, after... Probably after... Well, after the Galaxy, you know, then it starts dropping off big time. Um, so, um, so yeah, and one thing you'll notice, you'll see my name in new head coaches when you're like, wait a minute, weren't you there for a year? Yes, okay, so <laughs> I guess one of my editor files it was causing a crash uh, right before the Pan Pacific Championship game. Um, so I'm thinking there was an issue with that, with the scheduling, and we'll... We'll just go ahead and look at it. <clears throat> um, yeah, so you can see that it's it's still blank there uh, where I played the game, and that game was actually supposed to be played on February tenth, right? And but apparently there was some issue with scheduling with the other semifinal game um, between Jean Buck and Frontale, and I'm sure I've just totally butchered those pronunciations because those get, that game should have been played on the seventh same day as mine right I played Sydney um, but then the other game was played on the 14th and that's a week later uh, it's four days after the championship game was supposed to be played and so then you had on the 17th you had the third place game and then um, on you know the, the championship game was bumped to March 3rd and so I think that caused some kind of issue and so I was not able to get to that game it kept crashing so what I did was, um, what I figured out I could do, was I, re I resigned from the team and let the game play out. And then I used the editor, which some people probably are critical of me having an editor, having the editor on in the game. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. But I used the editor to allow me to take the Dynamo back over. So I'm, I'm back in the club. Luckily, he didn't fire any staff. Um, he, the the manager who replaced me actually was Siggy Schmid, <laughs> but he didn't fire any of my staff. He didn't get rid of any of my players. He didn't um, call back any of my loans. So, um, but um, I, I still I didn't get to play that Pan Pacific game, which the Dynamo did win. You I guess you saw that they won two to zero. So uh, yippee skippy for them. But unfortunately, I was not able to. Um, to manage that game so yeah so you, and you know that that's the kind of thing that I use the editor for um, I never use it to like whatever cheat but you know if you do I don't care you know like if you want to use the editor to cheat give yourself a trillion dollars that's fine I don't see the point in that what's the challenge in you know winning the game when you're just whatever editing your players and what you I guess you can do with the editor <clears throat> um, and all that stuff so you know, I, I I don't I use it for things like this. I also used it to um, 
after which I started this save after Wayne Rooney signed I'm sorry before Wayne Rooney signed with the Dynamo or with the Dynamo with DC United so I used the editor to move Wayne Rooney to DC United right now that made DC United better made it more challenging for when I played against them um, so yeah it you know, it's just kind of a... I also like um, being an American. Obviously, the, the, our, the football manager market is probably not as strong as it is in, <clears throat> in other parts of the world. Obviously, Britain, probably their number one market. Um, so I like to throw as much money as I can at SI, as reasonably you know, possible, so that just to help, I don't know, their their concentration on the American market. And they have done a lot with MLS. Like MLS is, is <clears throat> to me, it's phenomenal how realistic it, it is in FM, um, how close, how all the rules line up with um, the, real, the real rules in, <clears throat> well, the real life rules and the FM MLS rules, how close they are together. It's not perfect, but man, MLS, they, they, it's, <clears throat> it's, they're moving the goalposts all the time on the rules. And to, and to be able to program all that stuff in, it can't be easy. So I, um, I like to try and whatever encourage SI as much as I can to keep paying attention to the American market. Um, and so, yeah, I had to use the editor to fix a crash, and hopefully that doesn't happen again in the future. I don't know if there's anything I'll be able to do to keep it from happening, but it could be that if I'm in the Pan Pacific Championship, I'm going to have to mess around with the editor to make it work. <clears throat> um, so, but looking at the squad, now as I said, I kind of blew up my squad. I brought in a ton of guys. Um, we'll look again briefly at transfer history. I don't want to spend a lot of time looking at, at this, but um, all these guys I brought in since the end of last season. Signed three guys from, um, three guys from the academy. Uh, who I'll be honest aren't great prospects, but I, I just like I like bringing guys in to hopefully maybe sell them and because they're I mean they're basically free, you know. So um, hopefully I can develop them to the point where I can then sell them on to maybe a lower level club. If if not, if they don't turn into something, turn into whatever a, a wonder kid. Uh, I brought in Jose Villarreal, or I think that's how Villarreal. Villarreal, pretty sure is how you pronounce it. And but I already I traded him on for. Um, um, I think I traded him as part of a deal to get an international slot, maybe. Um, I brought in a lone player, Emmanuel Ajezoa from. Um, he's from Anderlecht, and he's a, a good fullback. He can play either side, but I'm planning on playing him on the right because he's right-footed. Um, and then I signed. Well, another important, I'm trying to look at my, the important signature, the important guys I brought in. The biggest, most important one left probably is Leo Xavier or Leo Xavier, however it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, he, he can play center back or holding midfielder. Uh, he'll probably do a little of both for me. Um, I kind of, I mean, he's got, I, I, for him to play defensive midfield, I'd really prefer his passing to be better. But uh, he's only 20, so he might get better. Um, and he's a good passer for a center back at MLS. Um, some of the guys I brought in, a lot of these guys you see here, uh, Adenelson, Carlos Rafael, Jefferson Felipe, uh, Willington Bueno, uh, I think even Durval Dos Santos I sent on loan. Yeah. Uh, Marcelo, Zhao Guim, Guim <laughs> however that is. Connor, Tom okay, so those that's starting my draft. So those guys, all those Brazilian guys I brought in, um, they're very young and they're quite frankly not good right now. But my scouts had high ratings for them, so I signed them and sent them off on loan. Um, I figure hopefully they can develop a little, and then maybe next season I can bring them in and see how they are. Or maybe if they're not that good, I can just sell them. Um, then I had the draft brought in. I don't know, six or seven guys from the draft. Connor Thomas is a fullback, play on either side, but my plan is to kind of play him on the left. Um, uh, then this guy, Nordella, Gabriel Nordella, who's a center mid. My plan is to play him in the, um, um, I guess you'd call it the, the eight, 
spot in midfield. He's a center midfielder, but the less, the more supporting mid midfielder. Um, and then this guy, Dalrymple, he was my first overall pick. And he and Xavier are going to challenge for that other center back spot. Um, already, right away, I feel like he's ready to play center back in MLS. You look at his ratings, um, I'd like for his work rate to be a little higher. And I'm going to try and fix that. But, you know, decent strength, decent jumping, tackling is good, marking, heading. Um, these are, well, he's, and you see, he's a four and a half star prospect. So this is a guy who could eventually wind up in Europe um, playing for the big clubs. But right now he's with me and hopefully <clears throat> he, um, he lives up to his potential. Uh, Eric George is a holding midfielder. Um, I like his technique, obviously, and his decisions, right? And so he is another guy who is if he's if he's not gonna be my starting defensive mid, he's definitely gonna get some. He's gonna challenge for that. Um, Rodrigo Torres is a more of an attacking center mid, um, decent prospect. Um, and then Rubel Caba, I cannot get guys with easy. To, why can't I get the Smiths or the Johnsons instead? I have to get guys like this. <laughs> Um, but he he does you know three star prospect you know I think he'll be all right he's got really good finishing and and he's a good header um, which is normally not the kind of thing I look for but when you see he's also got 14 pace that's good for MLS um, so I think he can be a, a a dynamic well he can be a very good goal scoring striker for me I just have to kind of round him out a little bit um, and then I got a goalkeeper who is he is my heir apparent to the to the goalkeeping spot um four star prospect um obviously very good uh then tom christopher he is a he can play right back or center but he'll be for me he'll be a center back um got some work to do but he's you know the jumping really jump you know that kind of caught my eye right there good in the air which that's important um for a center back uh, I would like for him to be faster, and that is where I'm going to focus. Um, Kirk Arnold is a guy, he's a left winger, but I'm going to try and get him trained at right wing and play him there, um, just because that's where I have a, um, a spot to fill. Um, but he's fast, you know, pace 15. Acceleration is a little low, but um, at 12. But, you know, hopefully he'll develop. You know, he's a decent prospect. He's not going to be a world beater, but, you know, possible national team call-up. Uh, and then this this guy, he was actually an undrafted player, but he was really high on my list. I think he, I think what happened was he got drafted. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let me look back at his career stats. Well, it says free. He got drafted, and I believe what happened is I traded my rights for one of the guys that I'll never sign to whoever drafted him. And let's just go look and see. Where do I see that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Trades. Well, it doesn't show up there. But, yeah, I, tra I traded the rights to one of my guys to who drafted him so that I could... Um, so that I could, could then sign Amic and um, just because I kind of well he was high on my list and you know left back is a place where I'll eventually have needs um, so you know and three and a half star prospect that's pretty good so he'll he could develop into one of the better players in MLS so so just kind of looking at my squad goalkeeper um, I Derek is going to be my starting goalkeeper um and willis right now is probably my second best goalkeeper but i want to get my the guy drafted i'm going to come and say nantier because i'm <laughs> i could be wrong on that but i want to get nantier um he's you know he's my next goalkeeper so he'll actually be the number two um then the right wing back spot um soa who i loaned in ij soa who i loaned in will be the starting right back um Playing behind him will be Marky Delgado, and then um, Connor Thomas will probably see some time there, but he's going to be my left back. So um, 
But Lungfist is my number one left back. Connor Thomas is my number two left back. And then Amick will fill that third spot. Um, center backs, Funmayor and, and uh, Leo Xavier were probably going to be my starting center backs. But Dalrymple is right there. And then also I have um, Tom Christopher as my other center back. Let me make sure that I'm... Um, yeah, so holding midfielder, um, that I'm kind of, I've got a bunch of different guys that can fill that spot. So obviously Xavier can, um, I feel like he's close to, to taking that spot, but then I also have Alton Top and Artur who could be defensive mid and Eric George. So, um, that's right now, that's a moving target, what I'm gonna do with that. I haven't totally decided yet. Uh, but then the other, the number eight midfielder, uh, the supporting midfielder, that obviously also Artur, Eric George could fill that spot. But probably it's gonna be Gabriel Nardella, who is a GA draft pick. Uh, and then the number 10 midfielder, Martinez and Gill. Um, and then Torres is gonna you know, get some appearances. He's my young prospect there. At right wing, um, it, Pena is going to be the starting right wing. Ronaldo Pena. And probably Kirk Arnold is going to back him up. Um, and then on the left, Minotas. And who did I have as my other left wing? Minotas, maybe winger. Or Nick Allen, who was another draft pick. Uh, no, no, Nick Allen was my um, academy prospect. And he has three and a half stars. So, and then striker Elise and Rubalcaba. So, um, yeah, Rubalcaba is you know, he, the scouts only rated him two and a half stars, but I, I don't know. I'm really hopeful that he develops into something, something better. If not, I'll sell him. Um, so as you can tell, like you can see, not as many. Well, only one thirty-year-old on the team from as last year's team. We started the year with like four or five. So we've definitely gotten younger. So what does that mean? Well, I expect inconsistent results. Um, we're you know we'll we'll win some games, but we're probably gonna lose some games that we shouldn't. Um, so that's kind of the reality of having a young team. The hope is that they continue getting better, and then by the end of the season, um, you've got an ex a group of guys that are experienced enough to challenge and go far. I'll say this about my squad: I'm looking at it i mean it's i've got i've used all 30 spots all 30 slots um which we'll go to a registration you'll see all ooh, who's the oh rodriguez is out because he's injured right now but he so he's the 30th so all 30 slots are used all i've got three dps nine internationals uh 10 of my guys are on the off budget so I, i've used all 30 and this year and this with this team more of these guys I'm excited about having not necessarily because they're going to contribute this year and Help me win this year, but because they're at least guys that I can develop for the future and so And one of the important parts of my transfer policy is always having somebody ready to step in For when you move somebody so just for example uh, Somebody comes in wants to buy Tomas Martinez who right now is one of my best players they offered me uh, his value right now is 5.75 million. If somebody came in and slapped 10 million down on the table, I would be okay with selling him because I've got Luis Gill right behind him, and then I've got Rodrigo Torres also there. So this is, yeah, this is a team where I'm comfortable losing anyone because I've got somebody right behind them to slide in who's either ready now to take their place or ready to really start developing. Um, whereas last year, I have an injury. Um, Somebody would come in with an offer, and I would, I didn't have anybody ready to step in. That's not a good situation. So at least, well, that's how I see it. Because um, I, I like moving guys. I like I like selling players. I like making money in the transfer market. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not a guy who goes and buy. I don't go and buy a fifty million dollar big name, which is fine if you do. You know, I say that, but I'm a, I'll bring in a big name guy off the free transfer. Um, you know, to fill a DP slot, but for the most part, I prefer <clears throat> buying low, selling high, and that's kind of that's kind of my transfer policy. So, 
I am kind of excited, you know, about this season. I do expect to, well, I, I don't expect to win the league, but I, you know, if I can get the playoffs, which I do, I think that this is a team that can't get the playoffs, then, then, um, then, you know, anything can happen, right? Because you're one of the teams that's in there, ball can bounce your way, who knows? Uh, I will say this, I'm a little nervous about board expectations. They expect me to win MLS, and they expect me to win the Supporter Shield again, and I don't know that I have the squad to do that. Um, so, that makes me nervous. Am I going to get sacked if I don't do that? Um, which that may be part of, I don't know, that may be part of the consequences of having to do what I did with um, firing myself and then making myself take back over. But uh, So anyway, um, next video which I know this was just kind of a looking at the squad and looking ahead video well um let's see if we can find one good here well maybe we'll do a um a live com of the Atlanta United MLS Cup rematch we we'll play them at home oh that might be a good one it's weird as I don't have FC Dallas until after that first open cup match all right so um I know this one this video probably a little boring but uh, next one will be a live com. It'll be fun. We'll, 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 I'm really kind of excited to see how these guys develop, right? How does how does Dalrymple is he ready to start to step in and start? Um, uh, Nardella uh, can he contribute from the midfield? Um, so that you know it'll be it'll be interesting to watch this season to see how these guys handle um, stepping right into professional football, right onto the field and playing against the big boys. So. We will see you in the next video. This is Uncle Sam FM um, signing off. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, uh, criticisms, please post them in the comments and I'll see you next time.